What's up everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Recently I uploaded a video doing some ballistic shell stuff and I was talking about needing new ballistic shell blocks. I was showing you guys my old ones and uh, how nasty they were and basically I just said I was saving up until I could afford some new ballistic shell. Well today this arrived on my doorstep. This is two brand new ballistic shell blocks and apparently my mom <laughs> watched that last video and decided that she was going to be awesome and surprise me with some new ballistics gel. So thank you, mom. She really is the best, but honestly, I feel kind of bad because I don't like it when she spends this amount of money on me. I feel like she did enough of that when I was a kid and I try to prevent that as much as I can uh, now that I'm a little bit older, but what are you going to do? They're here. She bought them and uh, we're definitely going to use these things. Now, what I didn't tell you is one of these is actually a 10% ballistics gel block, which I have been getting asked about forever. So we will do a ton of videos with this thing down the road and hopefully, uh, uh, that excites some of you guys. But today, I want to put to rest a reoccurring question that I continue to get, and that is, what is the difference between 10% gel and 20% gel? So I've used 20% gel since basically the beginning of the channel, and in almost every video that I upload, I get asked, what is the difference between 10 and 20% and why do you use 10% gel and stuff like that? So I could sit here and explain the differences and bore you guys to death, or we could just set these gel blocks up and shoot them and see for ourselves what is the difference between 10% gel and 20% gel. Let's find out. All right, so we're starting with the 20% gel, and I do have a second gel block right behind it, a really old second gel block right behind it, uh, just in case anything over penetrates. And we're gonna shoot a couple different calibers into each of these blocks, and I'm gonna start with the nine millimeter Glock 17, and the bullet that we're shooting is the 124 grain plus P HST. All right, our nine millimeter went in right there. And since these are such new gel blocks, there's actually still marks from the plastic uh, that was wrapped over the ballistic shell, but you can obviously still see in there really well. And that's actually a really good wound cavity from the HST and the bullet continued down the gel block. And as it usually does, it expanded really well. And the nine millimeter HST stopped at just under one foot into our 20% ballistics gel. All right, next we're gonna shoot the 45 ACP Smith & Wesson Shield. And for the 45, we're gonna shoot the 230 grain Federal Premium HST. You guys know that I'm a big fan of the HSTs. They just always expand really well. And I think for a video like this, it's the perfect round to use. So let's see how our 45 does. All right, our 45 went in right there below our nine millimeter and the wound cavity is actually a little bit smaller on the 45. Now that was a plus P nine millimeter, so it's not a regular HST, but the 45 continued down the gel block and came to a stop right there, just a little bit shorter than our nine millimeter. And as it always does, uh, that bullet expanded like crazy. The HST 45 stopped at about 11 inches into our 20% ballistic shell block. So this is where I would get a lot of questions or you know, sometimes even negative comments on certain videos. Uh, people saying that the 45 didn't even make it 12 inches, which is the minimum requirement for the FBI. Well, the problem with that is the FBI uses 10% ordnance gel and this is obviously 20% clear ballistic gel. Now I have heard theories that 20% clear gel is actually a lot more like 10% ordnance gel. I don't really know, that kind of gets confusing, but I try to put a disclaimer at the beginning of every video without you know, rambling on for too long and let people know that this is 20% gel and 20% gel does stop bullets shorter than 10% gel. So all the standards that you hear you know, on 12 to 18 inches for pistol rounds and stuff like that is based off the FBI's 10% ordnance gel and that is why a lot of these bullets get less penetration in my ballistics gel test. So let's get out the 10% gel block and see how they do. All right, I got the 10% block out and this is actually gonna be my first time ever shooting 10% ballistics gel. So I'm kind of curious to see uh, how this does. And I also noticed that the plastic didn't put nearly as many wrinkles on the 10% block as it did on the 20% block. So it just feels like a much softer gel block. So we're gonna shoot the exact same bullet 
the 124 grain plus P HST out of the Glock 17. Let's see how it does. All right, our nine millimeter went in right there towards the top of the gel block and the wound cavity is pretty big in this one as well, similar to the 20% gel block and the bullet continued down and definitely went further than it did in the 20% gel and it came to a stop right there, once again, fully expanded. And the nine millimeter in our 10% gel block went about 13 and a half inches. So a little difference, but not as big of a difference as I was expecting. I thought that this bullet might make it into uh, that second ballistic shell block, but it is a plus P round and they do tend to stop a little bit shorter. But still, I think in the 20% gel block, it stopped at 12 inches and in the 10% it stopped at 13 and a half. So there is a difference, just not quite as big as I was expecting to see. Now, one thing I've also noticed in other videos I've seen is 10% gel shows a much bigger temporary wound cavity on like high speed cameras. Now I don't have high speed cameras, but I do have some, you know, sort of slow motion camera set up here. So maybe we'll be able to see that, but I am curious to see what that wound cavity looks like in the 10% versus the 20%. All right, now let's shoot the 45 and see how it does. And the 45 went in right there below our nine millimeter. And once again, also had a smaller wound cavity in the 10% gel as well. Now the bullet continued down and this one had some pretty crazy bounce back, which is something I've never seen with this bullet in 20% gel. So you can see that it went out to about 13 and a half, 14 inches right there with our nine millimeter and then bounced back probably three or four inches to where it's at right now. And once again, the 45 HST also expanded really well. And our 45 HST with the bounce back included stopped at about 13 and a half inches. So for those of you that don't know, bounce back just means that the bullet went into the gel block and then bounced back a few inches, but wherever it goes to, that's where you mark that bullet. So this one did go 13 and a half inches, and then it just bounced back in the gel block a little bit. All right, so I'm giving you all a side by side right now. Obviously the top block is our 10% gel and the bottom is the 20%. And remember on that 45 to look at the wound cavity, not the bullet, but pretty consistent results actually. In both gel blocks, these bullets performed almost identical. We just got a little bit more penetration in that 10% ballistics gel. So I don't really want to make this video too long. I'm trying to keep this one kind of short. So I thought I'd just come out here and show you guys the difference between these two instead of just sitting here talking about it a whole bunch. So if you have any questions, post below in the comments and I'll be happy to answer it. I know a lot of you guys are actually smarter than me on most of this stuff, but I do get questions all the time and I'm hoping that this video will clarify some of that. So uh, if you do have a question, even if I don't see it, someone out there will see it and you will get a good answer. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it was helpful to some of you. Shout out to my mom for hooking up the ballistic shell. How awesome is that? Like I said, I did not expect that and that was a, a really great surprise. So shout out to you guys for being awesome and always being super supportive. Uh, it's just amazing how supportive the group of people that watch my videos is and it's, it's awesome to see and, and awesome to hear from you guys. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. If you liked this video guys, please hit that like button for me. I would really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.